We are live. Once again, I'm going to adjust my canvas so that you can see the whole thing right on there. And we're going to paint aspen trees today. We're going to use acrylic paint. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. You do not have to use acrylic paint. You could use oil paints. However, if you are an oil paint person, you could start it off this way and make life a whole lot easier. And what I mean by that is that you could actually start your painting by start your painting in acrylic and then you could go ahead and finish it with oil on top of it okay so you will basically just start off with an acrylic paint i use a whole variety i'm going to show you the colors that we're going to use today a little bit of sienna a little bit of orange maybe a little bit of yellow a little bit of black a little bit of blue and a little bit of green you'll notice that um we use a bunch of different colors this liquitex is actually my favorite favorite acrylic paint mostly because acrylic paint it um, the liquitex seems to last the longest in the tube and stay the freshest which is kind of a big deal if you have to step away for a bit okay so we're going to go ahead by starting off and um, breaking up our canvas every single time that we start a new canvas this is a new canvas and we put a coat of gesso on it to make it nice and soft and special um, we put a nice coat of gesso on it if you don't put a coat of gesso on it that is fine you are totally allowed to do that however if you're painting and the paint seems to bubble up on the canvas itself it just means that it's probably not it just probably needs a coat of gesso on it. Gesso just allows the paint to suck up into it and and adhere to the canvas itself. So you're going to want to either add a coat of gesso or you're going to have to keep piling on the paint in order to um, get the paint to stick to the canvas. It's not a super big deal and you can totally um, add gesso or not add gesso, but it is frustrating when the paint won't stick to the canvas. So you want to make sure that your canvas is properly ready just to make it easy for you. Um, okay, so we're going to use flat brushes. You'll notice um, I've just been talking about these brushes a lot, but you'll notice that one is a little bit longer than the other. All this one does right here on the left is it has a little bit more spring. This one makes a little bit tighter edge, which is perfect if you're trying to um, get into corners, maybe around buildings, um, straight edges, stuff like that makes it kind of uh, a little bit easier to get in there. I particularly on my acrylics and my oil paintings, I particularly like these. They're my most favorite brushes. Uh, better than any other one. However, you can use whatever you're comfortable with. Hey Shane, how's it going? Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's get started. We have a nice canvas. We have our brushes. We have a complete palette. I can show you my palette, but it is a mess, so we won't go there. However, you could completely lay your paints right out on a paper plate, which is what I do for my classes. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and break up the canvas we always start off with a blank canvas and it is so much easier to just go ahead and break it up into pieces and then paint those pieces in with a nice fill so let's start off with a center piece because we're going to start off with an aspen tree so we want to save a space for the aspen tree so with a nice watery paint now watery paint is mostly water I'm just going to show you it's mostly water see how that's mostly water and a little bit of paint really really thick paint would just be thicker like that i want it mostly watery and the reason i want it mostly watery is because if i make a mistake i can easily wipe it out with a wet rag or even a dry rag i use tons of these rags laying around the studio okay and so now what we're going to do with that nice watery paint I'm going to go ahead and space out an area for the trees. It's got a little piece of something right there. And we're going to 
start somewhere up in here and see how I'm loosely drawing it, loosely drawing an area to save out for the aspen trees. Look at that, super easy. Now, because we're working with trees, things in nature, we're going to use nice bouncy lines, simple bouncy lines that come together at the bottom. Now, look at how easy every single time you do that. Some people may end up with some smaller space in there and ask yourself, well, I want a bigger space. They may want a smaller space. That's great. Some people may want a bigger space, but whenever you decide, and art is very much letting the eye decide not the mind. The mind will try and tell you, oh, it's this, it's this, it's this. All you have to do is look at it and say, yeah, the, my eye knows. My eyes are having a good party with that. An easy way to just to let your eye decide is to ask yourself the next time you walk into a clothing store, whenever that might be, um, you can literally walk through the store and decide what looks good to me and what doesn't. Most people know within minutes. Hey, Aaron, how's it going? Thanks for watching. Okay, most people know in minutes what they like by letting their eye decide and not their mind. Okay, here you go. We now have a nice, easy background. I'm just going to fill it in. Just going to fill it in with that same watery blue, mostly water and a dot of blue. This is an ultramarina blue. It could be a cobalt blue. It could be any blue. Okay, you just want to fill it in because we got to get started somewhere. So we basically just mapped out super loose, super easy, a little bit of curvy lines, nothing super specific. And we're going to fill it in. Hey, Gina, G Ginny, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Okay, Tom, Louise, Mary, and okay great 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 okay so now we just mapped out the center part we just broke up the canvas with one puzzle piece that's the center puzzle piece it's nothing specific everybody's will be different and every time you do it it will be slightly different in addition to that okay so now we have these outside areas let's go ahead and break up that areas because we're going to want to put the trees around in here we're going to make it look like it goes into the trees thank you thank you thank you okay so what we're going to do is we're going to map it out and i'm using a little tiny bit of okra okra is a little bit of um, yellow and you can add a dot of sienna which is brown to it just to warm it up a little bit or you can just use straight old okra right out of the tube and we'll go ahead and we're going to come up here same watery paint we're going to break it up into one into two and into three pieces look at that one piece two piece three piece and everybody's will be different and every time you do it it'll be slightly different then we're going to go over here. We're going to do the same thing over on this side. Oops, I got a drop on there. I'm not touching that blue, but it's okay if you did. It would just drag out into a green. We have another space right there, another space right there, and then we'll go ahead and make our last space down in there. And then we have some area down in here that we're not going to describe just yet because what if there's bushes coming up and we want to leave some space for that? If you don't happen to leave space, no worries, it's going to be okay. Because remember, you're painting, you can make changes along the way anytime that you want. Okay, so now you'll look at your canvas in just a few minutes. We were able to break up this whole area. We were able to break it up into three bushes, three on this side, three on that side, and one center piece. Now, that was really easy. This is all we have to do. When you break up your canvas, into pieces before you actually paint you actually just took the math out of it you so you're not no longer having to focus on the math the vanishing point line of horizon grid systems you don't have to focus on that anymore now you can focus on the blending which is the funnest part of painting so let's just go ahead and start with this piece up here we already filled in this piece right here it's still wet i can still move it around if i wanted to but i really do want to let it dry in most of my classes, I try and get people not to touch it, like exactly what I'm doing right now. I shouldn't be doing it, but I just want to do it. And that's usually probably what happens to people is they're like, oh, dude, she's talking. I just need something to do. So you can move the paint around some more if you want. Okay, so now let's go back 
to this piece and let's divide this piece. Every single time we get a puzzle piece, there's gonna be a light side at the top and a dark side at the bottom. Most of the time, because the sun is shining down, unless you've got the sun coming this way or this way, that's okay. You could put the light over here and the dark over here, but just to make it easier to follow, we're gonna put the light at the top and the bottom at the dark, at the bottom, the darkest at the bottom. And let's go ahead and make it even easier for you and divide that in half again. Look at, we divided this piece in half again. We're gonna put the dark at the bottom, the light at the top. Now let's fill in that piece with that okra. Now I'm a little bit richer on the color, not using anything specific brush blends or anything, but I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna leave the okra inside the brush and I'm gonna touch a dot a dot of that sienna, just a dot. And sienna is just a reddish brown. You could use total brown or any brown that you got laying around. And I'm gonna take that brown. The okra is still in the brush. You wanna see that okra is still in the brush. And the reason why I want it in the brush is I don't want the brown to take over, but I wanna add some accent to this bottom part. See that first brush blend is always gonna be the darkest, but I'm gonna continue blending. Nothing specific, every single person has their own brush blend. It is very much like a thumbprint. Yours will be different than mine. However, in my classes, when people start painting, I try and match theirs just to get them comfortable with it. So now we have filled in the dark side. I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna clean it out in pure clean water. I have a little bucket over on this area. And I'm gonna touch a light lemony yellow. Here's a nice lemony yellow, <laughs> lots of paint on there. And I'm gonna fill in the top part. Look at what happens. I'm putting a nice lemony yellow on that one puzzle piece. Now this is a super easy lesson because it repeats itself over and over again. And it makes it easy for you to follow along. Now I have a light side and a dark side. However, in nature, things don't look light side, light, dark side. They have a nice blend into one another. So let's go ahead and lighten this up with a little bit of white and then blend the two together. You'll notice I left the lemon yellow in the brush again because it's so pretty. And also because I don't want the white to take over. So look at what happens. My first brush blend is always gonna be be the darkest and then I'm going to continue blending it all out into that space. Now I'm going to leave all of that color in the brush and I'm going to blend these two together to get a nice blend. This is still slightly wet but let's go ahead and start from the top and blend it down in to that color. Look at what happens. We get a nice blend. It didn't transition from light to dark. Hey AC, how's it going? Thanks for watching. Okay, so we have a nice blend from the light down into the dark. I can bring the dark back up into the light. Now look at what we did. We started from the light down to the dark and we got a nice transition of color. We got a nice transition and that's what you see in nature. You see from the dark to the light in a very slow movement. Okay, so let's clean out our brush because every time we switch puzzle pieces, we have to um, clean out our brush and start fresh. And if it's easier, you can go ahead and take the next puzzle piece and divide it in half. Then we're gonna fill it in with that nice layer of okra again. Okra, just a yellow with a little bit of brown in it. Then I'm gonna touch the brown, leaving the okra in there and just barely touching a dot of that brown. My first brush blend is going to be the darkest. Blend it out. Nothing super specific, just a nice blend. Then I'm gonna fill in the top puzzle piece. Incidentally, I have this lesson, I'm pretty sure I have this lesson, in one of my books on Amazon. So they're super easy to do. Leave the yellow in the brush and touch the white. And look what happens. That first brush blend is the darkest. We'll leave the most amount of paint. Now I have two sides once again, and it looks too light dark. We wanna blend those together starting at the top and blending down into the dark. So we have a nice transition. Fabuloso. Okay, and if this blue was drier, but I was messing with it earlier, it will need to dry, but I can come out and bounce these colors outside of here so that the tree looks like it's folding over into the trees. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do this other, this last one. We'll do the same thing. We'll divide it in half. If it makes it easier, you don't have to, but some people find it easier and I'm all about make it easy so we can have some fun. Put that nice layer of that okra on there and then touch that brown. So mostly okra, dot of brown, 
and blend those two together, cleaning out my brush, putting a nice layer of that lemon on there. Pretty lemon. This is a bright, bright lemon. And see how pretty it is? It's almost too pretty, like a little bit cartoony. So you want to tone it down and white will always tone. See the edge of the brush has a little bit of white in there. White will always tone down a too pretty of a color. Then we put it in there. We have a nice blend on the top and we're going to take those two and blend them together. Really nice so we don't have a stark transition from light to dark. And I'm just going to bring it down a little bit, bouncing it just outside the line because I know I can. Now look at that. We have three different sets of um, bushes for the trees. And you can already see, in case you can't, as if a tree would come down here and through the bushes, come down here again, through the bushes. So we start to have a tree shape because tree branches and trunks go in and out of the foliage. Basically, there is overlapping. When you add overlapping to your paintings, you literally create depth for the eye. When you're creating depth for the eye, it tricks it into three, seeing 3D. And we want to be able to see 3D. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let's check on this blue again to see how wet it is. I'm going to see, see how I can make a few lines through it because it's still moving because I was messing with it because I couldn't help myself. I'm going to look at how I can start to use my brush to describe a tree within those trees. Here's another super easy thing to do. You can take a little rag and wipe out some trees. Let's just go ahead and wipe out a few trees because we can. And we'll just wipe out a few. There you go. There's one wiped out there. There's another one. I want, to, I want it to look like there's a whole forest of trees. You want to look like a lot of trees. But say, for example, you were messing around and you had to go do something, make a phone call, go to lunch, whatever. And you came back, you could actually use pure white on the brush and go ahead and describe the trees that way. But we want to be able to see the trees inside that puzzle piece. So we first pa painted the dark blue and now we're adding a few trees inside there. Oh yeah, th there they are. And you can start to get a little bit of an idea of where the trees, now they'll go in and out of that foliage because the foliage, hey Trish Gherkin, thanks for watching. Man, you rock. Trish Gherkin is also an artist. She is a painting poor artist and does the most beautiful things. So I'm going to shout out to her and say, you rock Trini McBeanie. Okay, so now we're going to switch to the other side. We just put those trees in there because we want our eyes to start seeing the image as soon as possible because as soon as we can start to see it, it makes it easier to start playing with it. And it's all about the play. Oh yeah. So we're adding that white. I accidentally touched the yellow. Oh well, no big deal. Okay. So now you can actually see that the blue with the white on top of it actually created a little tiny bit of a tree as if it is a little bit of a forest. But say you were like, oh dude, I can't see the trees that well. I'm going to need assistance. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you some assistance because that's just what we do around here. We're painters. Okay, so now between those trees, he's like, I wanna see them better. What, look at what happens if we touch a little bit of blue and we put it in between the trees. So we're using the background color, or they call that negative space. So now you know, all the negative space means is this the background color, the color behind what I'm working on to make it easy. And I'm gonna paint in that background color so that you can see the trees a little bit easier. Does that make it easier to see those trees? Now I have this area here and this area here with that background color. And I could get off a little bit here and there, but no, oh well. It's like the time you got off the freeway too early. Ah, well, you could freak out about it or you could just fix it. Okay, there we go. So now look at 
this is going to be overlapping that I could actually to make it trick the eye into seeing more distance put another tree right there and the, the eye starts to see oh there is more trees back there there is a forest and we can go walking in the forest we don't have to go to Walmart anymore okay so now let's go ahead and paint this piece same way we did the other three these are still drying because we're going to work on those in a minute we'll divide it that puzzle piece in half Boom, doo -doo -doo -doo. nothing specific and we're going to load it up with some okra yellow and a little bit of brown or you can just use okra right out of the tube put a nice layer of okra on there then i'm going to go ahead and put a nice layer of that gorgeous super awesome sauce lemon yellow now remember that lemon yellow is almost having a party oops i touched the green accidentally but i'm going to continue on having a party on its own because it's so bright and cheery and we want to we want to look more natural to nature and you can almost see it. it's almost like a neon we want to tone it down just a little bit so it looks a little bit natural i'm going to touch the white leave the yellow on there just touch that little bit of white and bounce it around in there just to get a breakdown of that lemon yellow then i'm going to leave those now that's all wet now I'm going to you, you see the difference between this one and this one this one we created the light side we created the dark side now we're going to take the light side and we're going to blend it down into the dark side a nice blend those trees are soaking wet so I shouldn't touch them so let's go ahead and touch them and there we go now we have a nice uh, we have a nice set of foliage on the left side and you can kind of see that over in here we're going to create these trees that go in and out in and out let me just see if I can create it a little bit easier for you to see so I want you to see where we're going it's easy when we can create it so that the eye starts to see where we're going can you kind of see we're going to be drawing the trees up in there as if they go in and out of the foliage we want to create layering. Layering is the, probably the most overlooked key of perspective. And when you add layering, trees, foliage on top of trees, it tricks the eye into seeing 3D. It pushes things, pulls things forward and pushes things back. And because you're so rocking, it works out that way. Now let's go ahead and use the next piece. We have all these puzzle pieces. We divide it in half. And you'll notice how I'm not doing just a straight line because foliage is always up and down and all around bouncing all the while remembering that every single puzzle piece has a light side and a dark side. Light side, dark side, light side, dark side. Okay, now we have that gorgeous, super sexy okra in the brush. I'm going to leave it in the brush. I'm going to touch that sienna or any brown that you have. A dot on there is all I'm going to need. My first brush blend is going to be the darkest. No need to hit the panic switch when this happens. I see it all the time and people say, oh no, it looks too much. Don't worry, it's all wet. Just continue to blend it continue to blend to blend to blend if for example you got too much and I put a little bit extra on there so that you could see and not panic I could come up here and drop some of it off pick it up and drop some off up here doesn't that look nice it looks like it goes in here and there I could bring it up and drop some off over here bring it up and drop some off over here bring it up and around if I wanted to just to help define the tree just for fun because painting is all about the fun yeah okay so now we have a dark side Let's jiggy on back to the light side. Lemon yellow again. Yes, lemon yellow is so pretty. We'll put it on there. Nice little coat of it. See how pretty it is, but it's almost too pretty, a little bit cartoony. We're going to tone it down with white. Just put a little bit of white right on the tip of your brush. And I'm leaving the lemon yellow in there so that it won't overtake it and bouncing it. Now I, once again, have a light side and a dark side. We want those to merge together just like they would in nature and bounce them and you can bring a few so that they bounce up and over the trees i'm just showing you that but i'm going to go back over those trees so that you can see your eye can see where we're going now we've gotten a long way in just a short amount of time well sort of a short amount of time and now we're going to go down to this bottom puzzle piece what we're going to do is we're going to break it in half again we're going to load it up with some of that okra, beautiful okra gold color. Nice layer. I'm just going to bring it all the way down. May as well just color it over here. 
and then I'm going to clean out my brush and I'm going to fill in the top part of that puzzle piece. So now we have these six puzzle pieces and we're all we're almost on our last one. I'm going to load it up with that lemon yellow, beautiful lemon yellow. And then once that lemon yellow is on there, I'm going to touch the white, touch the white and blend it together. I'm just blending the top bottom part first of each puzzle piece, then the top part. Now I'm going to merge these two together. You can see when you look at all the other puzzle pieces that every time you break up a puzzle piece, you have to create a light side and a dark side, and then you have to merge the two together so that there's a breakup of the color. But even though I, I'm doing that right now, you'll notice that the dark side just continues to stay dark because that's how I started it. And I can bounce it around a little bit. Also, every single time we started this, you could have painted this whole thing in with lemon yellow and all gone back in with this okra, but it wouldn't look as if it's a, a foliage here and another one here and another one here. So every single time you break up puzzle pieces, you do want to create them separately, paint them in separately, and it will look as if they are separate. Okay, well that looks super awesome already. How quick is that? Okay, let's go back. I'm just gonna touch a little tiny bit of orange. Just a little bit of orange. I'm gonna add a dash of it here and there. I'm gonna first drop it off, just because it could be br broken up as if there's some um, orange inside the foliage. And look at what happens just by adding another teeny tiny bit of orange nothing specific just to break up so we actually added two colors on the top two colors on the bottom and just a dot of orange here and there just to help break up that uh, pretty fall scene okay now let's get interesting let's go ahead and say these trees weren't really aspen these trees were something else but these were the aspen trees i can see right here maybe you can too that these aspen trees in here are totally wet so I'm gonna let them dry and I don't feel like waiting around for them because that's no fun let's go ahead and play with these outside trees and let's use a little tiny bit of that same sienna which is like a reddish brown and I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of black to it can you see that touch of black super super teeny well, there it's, yeah, there it is. Okay, just a teeny tiny bit of black. And we're gonna come in and draw these trees right in here. Cause these trees might be different than those aspen trees. And let's just go ahead and break it up and add a few of those trunks that come down. We'll maybe add one more right there. And this one will actually go behind the foliage overlapping. We wanna create as much overlapping to trick the eye into seeing 3D. And then we'll bring that line and we'll come right up here and it may go off into this, the foliage once again. And we have this one coming up. We had a third one here, right there. And maybe this one comes and overlaps this one and goes over there. And we may even have one more slightly thin one here. Now look, in just a few minutes, we created some simple trees right on top of that, that okra. It was only on top of that okra, the bottom part of that um, that tree foliage. Let's go in here and straighten up anything. Now, remember we talked about negative space. All negative spaces is the color behind what you're painting on. If you needed to correct any of those trees, so I noticed that there was some white right there because I was trying to show you something. I could actually go back and use that background color and fill it in and use my negative space or my background color, the color behind what I'm painting and correct it. Now that looks a little messy, but not so bad. Okay, and we'll clean up that one. Well, that was lucky. And we'll clean up that one. And then we'll take that okra and we'll just bounce it around in spots because we happen to know that, remember we talked about overlapping. What if some of the foliage landed on top of the trees here and there, just a bounce of it here and there because we know that it might do that, okay? just to let your eye see it. I should be letting those dry a little bit longer, but I didn't because we didn't feel like it. But we're gonna bounce over to this side. We're gonna use that same Sienna, load my super awesome brush with some Sienna, and then I'm gonna touch that black. 
teeny tiny bit of that black. I am going to let these two sexy colors mix right on the canvas. Okay, when you can mix colors right on the canvas that is really similar to French Impressionism and it look it breaks it up really easy. You get a nice variety of color. Okay, so then we have our first tree trunk. We're gonna bring that tree trunk right up here, go behind the top foliage, go up again. Oops, I'm gonna touch that black again so we get a nice mix and come up here and I may branch off and come over here and over there going behind. Let's add another one right there, goes behind the trees. It's, I'm only doing the bottom part of the trees because it goes behind the foliage and branch it off over there. Woohoo! Let's go ahead, that looks good. We've got some foreground trees, trees that are closer to us, these trees, and then we got those background trees. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bounce some color on top of those trees a little bit here and there, because we know that sometimes the foliage would do that because it can, it pops up here and there. And incidentally, if you ever had, let's just take these top ones. They're pretty and they look great and stuff, but we want them to look as if they go back into the foliage because we know that they do. Just top them off. Top, just go right on top of them and you see how it just automatically looks. I'm gonna show you that again over here. This little tiny one comes in and out of the foliage. By just touching the top of it and the bottom of it, it looks once again overlapped. It looks like it goes in and comes out. There we go. And we'll just top off those other ones because it rocks, okay? Now, look at that, we have foreground trees. Oh, let's add some more over here. My eye will just show me like maybe right there. It comes just barely over the tree, maybe right there and there. Okay, spectacular, looking good. Okay, now we have to focus on our aspen trees. These aspen trees are behind these trees and we darkened them up by putting that blue in there but we want them to look like aspen trees because right now they're just white sticks. So aspen trees normally have some sort of a dark curved line that goes around the white. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch that black again, but because black can be a little bit dominant, I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of brown in the tip of the brush. And we're gonna go right to here, the center one, and we're just gonna roll a little tiny bit. Now you'll notice that I can make thicker or thinner lines up and down that aspen tree. And look at in just one, two, three, four, five, little tiny brush blends, all right, six, brush blends, you could create a curvature around the, line, around the tree. When we are blending on the paint and we want the subject to look like the subject, the aspen tree, to look like the aspen tree, we will use brush blends that look as if they go with the subject. And if we were to put our hands around a tree, it would make a curve, a curve. Well, that's not exactly a curve, but you know what I'm saying. A curve that would go around the tree. So these lines right here are slightly curved as if they would be going around the tree. Let's go ahead and add some more on this one. This looks like a thinner tree. I'm thin, yay. Okay, and add a few thick, thin, a few dots, nothing specific. Remember, it's just a little tiny hit and a miss, hit and a miss, and we have one over here. Now look at how in just a few minutes, we created a simple little aspen forest that looks spectacular. Okay, now look at this one over here. You can't forget these little detail guys. We want to make sure to add any brush blends on them. If for say example, you got all out of whack, you were having too much fun and you messed up on that. You could actually, once again, use your negative space or the white behind the aspen trees and correct any of those black lines that got out of whack. If you caught it before it got too far, you could actually come back with your brush and start to pick it up. Or I'll just show you so you can see it with your eyes. I see how if that one got too big, I could come back with white and start to blend it out and come back. Because sometimes the aspen trees have these thick, I don't know, they're like bark something, some sort of a bark. Okay, so now that looks super. Okay, so 
we have a nice set of aspen trees we have gorgeous foreground we have these trees which are slightly different let's go ahead and add a branch let's add a branch to the aspen tree and we'll just go ahead and once again use that nice brown and we'll just add a branch to say this one right here we'll just make it coming out and around remember it goes around the subject and comes out and maybe branches off over there nice we got a branch going on it goes right in there we can top that off in a minute but since we're, our brush is already loaded with that black we'll go ahead and add another branch maybe on this one right there just a little simple one it's really wet and I can add a curved line where the branch comes out of the tree and then drag it down so it looks like it's just a slight color difference of coloration very nice okay so for the most part this is normally where I would stop you could start off this painting in acrylic which is what we did here then I many many times go over this whole thing with oil and oil is like working with butter but imagine starting a painting and having this background to work on you would have very little error because you would know exactly what to do and you would do it exactly the same I can see something right here see how this branch looks like it's coming forward just a little bit too much we want it to look like it's still in the background I loaded my brush once again and I just went right on top of it oh that looked good let's do it again I loaded my brush with that lemon yellow and we'll just put a few of those really nice as if there were leaves because you want the the tree to look like it would in nature so we'll put a few leaves here and there and bounce them off of that aspen area and maybe one in there just a little bit so that it looks like it's a layered effect we don't want it to look just like that we want it to bounce it outside the line you could even take these lines and bounce them up and down maybe down here as if some of them may have fallen down into that area we'll bounce these outside the line remember we made those lines in the very beginning to give us some guidance it's so much easier to know where you're going before you get there in life and in painting very similar in that area but we're gonna bounce those lines just outside See how I would just add a few here and there and it looks really natural when I do that. So now that's the light side. We added just a few here and there. Now we're gonna go right back to that dark side, which is the bottom half of that brush blend and we'll add a few there. If your brush ever has too much water in it, then you can set it right on a brush. You don't know if you can see that, but the paint stays in and the water brushes out so that's a nice thing about having rags on hand is that they will allow you to do that now I'm going to come in here and add some of those brush blends just outside just a few of them so that this box that we made to start off with doesn't look so boxy now look at in just a short amount of time I'm just adding a few here and there so your eye can see it and go yeehaw it is a party time on the canvas adding a few there might be you know so we have this nice um, light area we might want to break it up because sometimes you go into the trees you can see into the trees and then bounce a few outside here and there now wasn't that simple and I'm just adding color here and there because I know that I can and it looks good okay so now you're like oh dude those are pretty colors but I am a red person I like red I've always liked red I'm gonna go ahead and take my awesome sauce brush and load it with a little tiny bit of that orange so that the red doesn't get too dominant then I'm gonna to touch a little tiny bit of that red see the orange is still in there and then the red now I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of that red your first time you touch the canvas with a loaded brush is going to be the heaviest brush blend that's all right you just continue on and see how it already started to tone down and I'm going to add a little tiny bit of red here and there just to break things up one more time now you're like oh hey man what if I'm a purple person what if I really liked purple and red wasn't my shindig well that's all right let's just go ahead and clean out that brush now look at that now we're singing now we're working with petroleum 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and touch a little tiny bit of blue and that same red and we've mixed it up. Now, blue and red will make purple. However, sometimes if you're working on your palette, here I'll just show you my palette. It's a half paper plate and it's, <laughs> if you're on a budget, you could serve dinner on that. And be like, dude, we're on a budget. Okay, I do that because it saves space. But look at this. I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's purple or not. You can always, white will always give it up. Look at this. I can touch that white to it and the white starts to show, oh, it is a purple. So the white, if you're ever unsure what's on your brush, oh, we got a blob, not a big deal. If you're ever unsure what's on your brush, you can go ahead and use white to give it up. It will tell you exactly what is in the brush. So now we have a little bit of a purple. Well, it looks like a little bit of a purple and just add some in here. Say I wanted to add some purple. Maybe there was some darkness over in here for maybe a a shadow or something like that and we'll just go ahead and add some over here we don't know exactly what it is and we don't even have to we'll just add some there now we have that purple down in there as if it was another some sort of another bush so let's go ahead now that we went ahead and added another layer every time you add another layer it pushes all the other scene back and let's go ahead and maybe add a little tiny bit of that black. I don't know if you can see that. And maybe as if it was a branch of something else, another bush coming around. And what you could do is since we just talked about white giving it up and telling us what is in the brush, we could continue to add pure white on top of that. And it continues to show us and highlight the dark side and the light side of the purple, which is maybe another bush or something. Okay, in just a short amount of time, we finished a really nice painting. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you super, super much for watching, and you guys all have a rocking day. I will see you later.